everybody. Welcome to Walk Worthy. I'm Erin. And I'm Lindsay. And today we're going to be talking about confidence. What that looks like in the life of a believer, in the life of a woman, what it should be based on, why maybe we struggle to have it. Um, so we have a lot to dive into. So let's start by talking about maybe what do we even mean by confidence? Um, how would we define that? Maybe I feel like there's in the world, maybe people talk about oh, be confident and all mm -hmm. these things. But what should our confidence really be in and what is it based on as a believer? Yeah, in the world, I feel it's very much based on our own abilities and strengths. Mm -hmm. We're trusting in ourselves. And there seems almost to be a, a boldness or a brashness assigned to the world's confidence. Like yeah. It's just, this is who I am. Deal with yes. it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but as a believer, we are called to have confidence as well, but it talks about us having our confidence in the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, The Bible says that you have been my confidence for my youth. So it should not be rooted necessarily in our abilities or in anything earthly. Those things certainly are, are given to us as well, but that shouldn't be the root of our confidence. And that's why our confidence, regardless of where we are, never changes because it's rooted in something other than ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's based on who God is, not necessarily who we are or what our abilities are or mm -hmm. what we're capable of, but on, you know, that phrase that always says, I don't know who I am. I know whose I am or yeah, something right. like that. <laughs> but it is true. Yeah. Like our confidence should be based on who we know God is and who he has called us to be as a result mm -hmm. of that. Yep. Yeah, and our and in um, Second Corinthians, Paul talks about having confidence. He says, "My godly behavior, in so many words, has given me confidence." That like he mm -hmm. he knows he can walk into a room because he's clean in his heart. He doesn't have any issues. He doesn't have to feel insecure about, "Oh, did I offend that person? Did I gossip about that person? Am I in sin in this way? And am I going to be discovered?" He's like, "No, I have confidence. I'm clean before the Lord. My confidence is rooted in the Lord, and so I'm good to go." Mm -hmm. And I think that's really powerful, but could be tricky for people. I know even it's tricky. Even just <laughs> hearing it now. I'm like, oh, that's tricky because, <laughs> you know, you don't want to be, I don't think that Paul's being self-righteous in that. Sure. Um, and it could maybe come off that way, mm -hmm. but he is confident because he knows that he is in step with the Lord. He mm -hmm. is walking with the Lord and knows that he's trying and striving to please the Lord. And mm -hmm. so if there is sin, if those things need to be taken care of, mm -hmm. they've been taken care of. Yeah. And I think that's a big key, just as you say that in knowing that everything in our lives, it's very there are a lot of people that we juggle. There are a lot of relationships, but ultimately this comes down to me and the Lord. And mm -hmm. so I have to do what is right before him, what he's called me to do, which might not make everybody else happy, mm -hmm. but I can't allow that to give me feelings of insecurity or shake my confidence because I know I'm clean with the Lord. I'm walking as he's called me to walk. Um, and that doesn't mean that we don't hear people say like, hey, you're in sin. Nope, I'm just clean before the Lord. Right, right. I have confidence. <laughs> we no, have to keep <laughs> <Yeah>. clean before <laughs> have to the keep Lord. keep clean before the Lord. Yeah. Um, but that you are in step, like you said, in step with what he's called you to do and who he's calling you to be. Not perfectly, but we're walking in that way. Mm -hmm. We're striving for We're it, striving for, sure. for that. Right. And I think it's important to say too, like confidence isn't like an excuse to just oh, this is, you know, I'm, I'm going to be confident in this. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes even in the world, like they are confident in things, not they, but I mean, we can fall <laughs> into it too. But confident in things that like, oh, should we really be confident in that? Mm -hmm. Or is that something that I need the Lord to change in me? So I don't want us to like think every insecurity that you've ever had, like just be confident in right. it. And it's all going to be okay because God gave you that confidence. So we're going to dig into that a little bit more mm -hmm. um, as we go along. But we need to realize that we are made in the image of God mm -hmm. and the things that reflect him, we should be confident in mm -hmm. them. And that is the root of our identity. Yes. And that is important because I think our confidence come from comes from where we believe our identity to be. Mm -hmm. So if our identity is in our... I don't know, having enough accomplishments or being married or having kids or whatever. It's That's not a, a solid foundation for your identity. It has to be rooted in, I am made in the image of God, I am the Lord's, and I'm walking how he's called me to walk. And out of that comes confidence, mm -hmm, definitely. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the Bible says. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think, especially as women, I think most of our viewers are women, mm -hmm. um, we it can often be an area that we struggle with most. There's a lot a of huge insecurity. Problem. It's a huge battle. Mm -hmm. Like e even for me, mm -hmm. like this is something that I battle mm -hmm. on the daily, constantly being, you know, maybe I'm not confident in an area because I am just not good at it, mm -hmm. you know? And there are a lot of things that come up that I don't feel like I'm good at. So mm -hmm. it's easy for me to be insecure or just not want to do them or mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable there. So I, 
uh, I'm not going to do it. Um, but sometimes God does call us into places that are uncomfortable. Sometimes mm -hmm. doing things that we're not good at is good and can maybe be, um, it helps build relationships. Maybe it's an opportunity for the gospel. Things like that where it's like, why does this matter? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, but yep. I think when we feel that lack of control, that's when our confidence is gone. Yeah. And and you, I was thinking when I feel like that, like I don't know if I'm going to be very good at it or mm -hmm. My, what I'm really saying is I might fail at this and embarrass myself in yeah, front 100%. of people, yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. which, okay, then you come back to the fear of man and the approval yep. of man and all of that stuff. In in Job, it talked about the people whose confidence is like a spider web. It's just so fragile. It just mm -hmm. can, it just can break in, and some of our, some of people's confidence and even in certain situations you get in there, you're like, oh, my confidence is like a spider web. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, touch it, don't, touch it. <laughs> don't touch it. It might fall. <laughs> yeah. But I, th I thought that was such a good visual yeah. of some people because it can our confidence can be so situational that we walk into an area and we can feel great and fine. And then all of a sudden you walk into a situation with some different people that you might not know or you feel like they're in a different social strata than you mm -hmm. are or they're more accomplished or they're better at something. And all of a sudden, there it goes. Right. Spider web is shaking. Yeah, I am nothing. <laughs> Destroyed. I am a bug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think the what's so obvious in that is that we have put our confidence in the flesh in those areas mm -hmm. because confidence in the Lord doesn't waver like that mm -hmm. and it doesn't fall apart. But yeah. in those moments we have put our confidence in the flesh, like mm -hmm. you said, whether it's our accomplishments or our social status. Um, sometimes we put our confidence in our ability to provide financially mm -hmm. things like that. And if one bit of those things are shaken, yeah, then uh, I can't do this yeah. and I, I don't know. I'm just going to retreat. Or if we perceive, a lot of times it gets shaken too because we're comparing ourselves to somebody else. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that comparison is not even based on anything real. Right. It's our perception of somebody. Right. And so we start comparing ourselves to somebody else and we feel, I don't measure up in the same way. I'm not as good as she is at whatever. Mm -hmm. So now I have no confidence. Right. And well, who cares? We all have right. different gifts. Yeah, I mm -hmm. talk to my kids about this sometimes that they'll go out and sometimes expect to all be the same equally, you know, I'm, I'm as good at this as, as everybody else. Like, mm -hmm. okay, but you have certain gifts. So you might be really good at this thing and that kid's really good at this thing and you're just fine at that thing, mm -hmm. but we need to celebrate each other's gifts and not make that provoke insecurity in us. It yeah. shouldn't shake our confidence. Like we should look and say, okay, God gave that person an incredible gift to serve in this way. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, and I think what's so important too in those situations is like God didn't what did God call me to what yes. did he make me for and I should be able to be confident in that you know I work with a lot of musicians and with music there's so many things you can mess up and so many things but God has gifted each of them in such a powerful way and sometimes you know when they're nervous or like oh I'm not sure about it I try to tell them like be confident in the giftings that God gave you mm -hmm. like he gave you this to use and he's going to empower you to be able to use it like I maybe I'm not called to be confident in other things because yeah. God didn't call me to that. Yeah. Um, and so just really finding like, God, what did you call me to? And how can I do that? Well, and be okay with the fact that like I'm doing this well and they're doing that well mm -hmm. and you're working it all together. Yeah. And you're, and there are certain areas where if you are trying to step, like I'm just going to make myself good at singing yeah. probably isn't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> probably keep that insecurity. It's there right. for a reason for sure. <laughs> because you're not called to that. God's protecting you. Yeah, it's like, this is no, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and trying to follow his leading in that. And when we do, but even in that, sometimes people will say, I just don't feel comfortable. It's so out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. The reality is there are times that God does call us to something that maybe, you know, I think about even speaking. I didn't even know that that was really in me in the capacity that he uses mm -hmm. me for that. And I was super insecure about doing that, but felt like I kind of just need to do this afraid because I knew yeah. God was like, you're doing this. And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. But Allowing the Lord to give you the confidence. I knew this confidence is from him or this ab even ability to step on the stage and open my mouth is from him because I really in and of myself don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. That for me was really scary. But it, there is something beautiful in allowing him to be your confidence in yeah. an area that isn't something I would have mm -hmm. stepped out in necessarily. But when you do that, you find your foundation in him that he's able to make you unshakable, even though you kind of feel afraid at the same time, if yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it's just so much easier to give him the glory in those areas. Yeah. Like, Lord, I know that I couldn't do this without you. Mm -hmm. Like, you carried me through this. Yeah. And it's just, it's almost protects us even more in those areas mm -hmm. that we need his confidence because we will give him the glory and not think that it's from ourselves. Yeah. Yeah.
That's good. Um, talking about the comparison thing too, I think sometimes we don't protect ourselves and we allow insecurities to come. And I was thinking about that, like what are the things that cause me to be insecure? And I think a lot of times there's just so many influences in our life like social media is huge mm -hmm. where, you know, we're looking at all these things that people are doing. And like you were saying earlier, like they're not necessarily even based on fact because you're only seeing this moment yeah. of someone's life. And I know that that's something that people say about social media all the time, but I think sometimes you don't even realize it's happening. And then all of a sudden you're discontent with your life and you feel bad about yourself and you're constantly striving to do these things or, and then you can't do them. And so then you feel bad, but you can't necessarily like see through the fog sometimes yeah. because it's just part of our world and it's how life is. But I think there's something really valuable to, you know, if you are lacking confidence in an area, maybe see why that's happening. Mm -hmm. And are there some influences that you need to cut off for a while to just really see and just seek the Lord and not allow those things to really inundate your mind. That was just something I was thinking about in the comparison thing. Well, and then coming back to what am I called mm -hmm. to be? If you're walking with the Lord, then you, you have confidence in the things that he's called you to be. Right. And the truth of social media, the live social media is I could go out tomorrow and spend eight hours and make some incredible, take a bunch of pictures that mm -hmm. I just dole out through the month. And then the rest of my life is a complete shamble, right. but it looks cool online. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? That one day. Yeah, that one day. <laughs> right. Let's go to the park and take pictures. I'm such a good mom. <laughs> you know? Right. Take a quick snapshot at dinner with my husband or whatever. Oh, he's such a good marriage. You know, like none of that could be true. Nobody right. knows. Mm -hmm. But we're comparing ourselves to this airbrushed ideal because um, someone's life looks neat and we let it shake our confidence. It's silly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of just running our own race, getting our eyes on mm -hmm. what God has called us to do. Yeah. And like you said, ultimately, these insecurities and lack of confidence are an attack yeah. from the enemy. They can be. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I think sometimes we can, and I would say that the world does this, mm -hmm. you can use um, a lack of confidence in, or uh, what am I trying to say? You can claim confidence, like I'm going to be confident in these things when maybe you have a lack of confidence because you're not stewarding that area of your life well. I don't think that it might, it's the first thing to jump to that like, well, I'm just under attack and mm. you know, all this is a lie. These insecurities are a lie because I think sometimes we can use that as an excuse. So like, I'll just give a personal example. A long time ago, I was and I mean, I still battle it. I'm not like over it, but <laughs> arrived. <laughs> I have not arrived, folks. <laughs> but I was very like body image was just like a very big insecurity for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would talk to my husband about it and he would, you know, try to encourage me like, well, you know, do something about it then. <laughs> and but, you know, I didn't want to hear that. It wasn't like that's not what I wanted to hear. And so I would use the excuse for like, this is just the way God made me. Mm. Well, like that wasn't true. Mm. You know, God didn't make me to be insecure or to be overweight. He made me to be a good steward of the body that he gave me. That doesn't mean I have to be a size zero. That doesn't mean that, you know, any of those things, but it means that I should be stewarding my body well. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't. So I think there was an area of insecurity there because, you know, maybe I needed to pay attention to it, mm -hmm. you know? And if this isn't just like a body image thing, maybe you're insecure about having people over to your house because mm -hmm. your house is a train wreck or whatever yeah. it is. That doesn't mean your house has to be perfect, but I think it's important first and foremost to like check ourselves and our hearts and say like, okay, am I stewarding this well? Mm -hmm. Is this something that I need to grow yeah. in? Or should I just say like, nope, I'm just going to be confident yeah. in this. But I think that you know, obviously you can't change your body overnight. You mm -hmm. can't change certain things overnight. But in the daily grind, are you trying to steward it well and honor the Lord with what you're doing? And if you are, then maybe the enemy is attacking yeah. you. But first we need to like, am I doing this to myself? Yeah. And sometimes we can be bothered by something because there's a problem. Yeah. It's not necessarily just like you said, oh, Satan's after me. He's trying right. to make me insecure. Yes. Like, okay. Do better though. <laughs> right. Yeah. Can we do like better? Like if you feel bad as a mom, maybe you need to engage your kids more. You For know, that sure. could be true. You stand next to somebody that's really engaged with their kids and you're like, oh, I could do better. I mean, you could probably do better. Yeah. You know? And maybe God's sharpening you by allowing yeah. you to see this other mom. You know, mm -hmm. like you shouldn't be mad at her or like be like, nope, 
I'm fine just the way I yeah. am. Like, God, God gives me like confidence. This. He made me yeah. like this. <laughs> Maybe he made you to be a better mom, yeah. you know? But it just takes a little more effort. And I just, I don't want us to use this godly confidence as an excuse for laziness. In our yeah, lives. yeah. So, I mean, there is, there's a fine line between absolutely. being, um, letting something make us feel insecure and or letting something sharpen us. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a, there's a, and there's friction in both. Absolutely. You know, you can look at something and be like, oh, I'm just a mess. And, and it's based on something silly. But sometimes God does bring us into contact with something. Even I mean, I've had examples even as a wife or as a mom mm-hmm. or where I'm like, gosh, I, I've, I've seen a wife respond to her husband, yeah. you know, when we were very early married and thought I would have handled that totally differently and been so much more disrespectful. I mm-hmm. really need to fix that. And that was an area where you kind of get nicked for a minute. Yeah. But it's not, I, I, I made me take a look at myself in a good way and yeah. And not like we can't use excuses to be like, well, you know, it's just who I am. I'm just just really sassy. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm super contentious. So whatever, deal with it. You married me. Yeah, (laughs) you signed up for this, buddy. (laughs) Now you're stuck. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, I think we just need to be very careful of that because um, we get messages like that from the world all the Mm -hmm. time that say like, just be you. Yeah. Well, yeah, man, me um, is wretched, wretched, man. <laughs> and people say this about their mouths. Like, I just don't have a filter. Okay, well, get, that's, one. get one. It's not okay. <laughs> yes, so, exactly. Yeah, you can't always, you know, so maybe people don't want to be around you because you don't have any control over your mouth and you're super negative and gossipy and awful. Mm-hmm. And then you're insecure because nobody wants to be around you. Well, okay, well, there's a deeper problem than just have confidence in the Lord. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> all but, that being said, all that being said, <laughs> if you are checking that and you're trying to steward things while well, you're trying to walk, like Paul said, mm-hmm. if you are able to be clean before the Lord and you can go in with a godly conscience, um, then maybe you are under attack in some mm-hmm. way. And it is a very easy way for the enemy to attack mm-hmm. us. And it is a way for him to tear down the image of God because mm-hmm. we are made in the image mm-hmm. of God. And it leads us into so much sin and security does. It makes us do crazy things. I mean, you think about in relationships, people compromise physically in relationships out of insecurity. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they'll leave if I don't. Yeah. Or um, it pushes us into people pleasing and we say yes to everything. And then we're super busy and stressed out. We have no peace. We have mm-hmm. no time for the Lord. We have no time for our family. And it gives us anxiety sometimes or leads to depression when we feel like I'm just not as good as she is. Mm-hmm. It just leads into all kinds of different sin. And I think that is definitely an attack of Satan on the image of God and even in our relationship with the Lord and our relationship with each other. It can cause division and yeah. all kinds of problems. Absolutely. And when we struggle with, at the base of it, like if we're struggling with insecurity, it's because we're elevating somebody or something mm-hmm. above the Lord and what he says mm-hmm. and what the truth of his word says or what he's calling us to. Like, do I believe what the Lord says about me or am I going to believe how social media makes me feel? Right. Do I believe that I'm fearfully and wonderfully and intentionally made and gifted and called for a purpose? Mm -hmm. Because that's what God says. Or do I believe that, you know, I'm worthless and I'm not good at anything? Mm -hmm. Like we have to, at the base, like look to the truth of God's word more than anything else. Yeah. And and it comes back to also what is your, what are you even shooting for? What's your goal? Right. If you're looking at, any other person, really, whether it's a someone on social media, someone in the church, some person, some friend, whatever the situation is, and that becomes your ideal and your mm-hmm. goal of who you think you're called to be and what you're supposed to do, you're going to always be off and you're going to always feel insecure because you're not going to be able to attain that because that's, again, not what you're called to. What we're called to is to walk with the Lord and to do what he's asked us to do. Um so our, even our measuring stick, if you want to call it that, needs to be the word of God and scripture and not other people right, or absolutely. the world's things. Well, I was trying to find a verse, but I can't remember where it is. I 222 it was, Oh, maybe? it's 222. I yeah. was in 22 too. Close. <laughs> you had all the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I just needed to move the colon. Well, I was just thinking, you know, I really love this verse in Isaiah 2 um, because mm-hmm. Galatians 1.10 is – a really awesome verse and it says you're now seeking the approval of God mm-hmm. or man. Um, if I were seeking the approval of man, I would not be a soldier of the cr- a servant, a servant of Christ. Yes. So I love that verse, but I often, for me, I am even trying to look for approval from like people in the church. You know, mm-hmm. it's not necessarily like the world and, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's co-servants of Christ. And th- so that is like a different kind of challenge. So I love this verse because it says, stop regarding man whose breath of life is in his nostrils for why should he be esteemed? Mm. 
you know, that's all man. Yeah. Why am I elevating this person and esteeming this person over the Lord and mm -hmm. what they say I should and what he says I should be? Yeah. Um, and that's just, I don't know. I just love that person. I wanted to share it because I think sometimes we can think like, well, I'm not trying to do what the world wants me to do. But if anybody, even yes. a godly person, yeah. if we are esteeming them higher than the Lord, then we're wrong. We're wrong. It's idolatry. Yep. And again, that leads into all kinds of crazy sin because the truth is we're all, we're all just, the breath of life is in the mouth. Like we're all just a vapor that passes yep. away. No one's cool. Except yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Nobody's cool. <laughs> no one's cool. <laughs> right. It's just the Lord. Uh, yeah. And we have to elevate his opinion and the goal of our life and who we're supposed to be ought to be his approval. Absolutely. That's it. Right. Nobody else. Yes. So. I think we need to talk a little bit because we can talk about confidence and every, the, then everybody's going to be walking around like, like, I don't need your approval. I'm confident. <laughs> like, no, there's obviously going to be a line between <laughs> confidence and pride. Mm -hmm. And I think the root of that and to tell the difference is what is our confidence in? Mm -hmm. Pride is going to be in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Confidence should be based in the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the line between the two. And the ability to be, so confidence also, I don't think has to be, we make confidence this like, you know, thing. I yeah. think it kind of just means you're not shaken and you're not thrown off balance by things. You mm -hmm. can go stand in any room, anywhere. You don't have to be the center of attention and be like, everybody look at me, I'm cool. That's a different, that's mm -hmm. not confidence. You should be able to just walk in and be secure in who you are. This is, I am who God made me. I'm walking how he has called me to walk. There are different people doing their different things out there who might have more influence than me, have more money than me, mm -hmm. be have different giftings than I do. But it's okay because this is who – I really am assured that this is who God made me to be. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And and we can get weirdly – sometimes I think insecurity too is a weird jealousy mm -hmm. of chasing somebody else's giftings or somebody else's influence. And so we don't have it. And that's what we're shooting for. That's our goal. And we're insecure because we don't. We should be content with – where God has called us to be. And if we are, I think that enables us to have more confidence with people in any room that we walk into. Yeah, absolutely. I think too, um, this is what's so weird about pride is the insecurity is pride. But basically, I feel like when you are feeling insecure or, you know, even when you're prideful, both sides, like your eyes are on yourself. Always, yeah. Like, you're looking at yourself. You think everybody else is looking at yourself. Like nobody cares. Everybody's looking I at promise, themselves. No one's thinking about They're you. They're all looking at themselves <laughs> yeah. because we're all horrible. Yeah. Like that's, I just feel like we get so focused on ourselves. If we could just shift that attention and maybe even in those moments of insecurity, if we would have the wherewithal to like mm -hmm. shift our mind to like, Lord, like this is what you called me to be. This is who you are. This is who you say that I am. Mm -hmm. And just, let those things fall away. Like I love that song, turn your eyes upon Jesus. The things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. If we would look at Jesus in those moments, mm -hmm. they would just fall away mm -hmm. because we've shifted our mind on things above and taken them off of ourselves. Yeah. And both insecurity and confidence is such a, or I mean pride, not confidence. There's such a me focus. Mm -hmm. You know, pride is going to come in and it almost is demanding worship from people because yeah. I am so great. And insecurity is... Oh, I'm not great, and and but either way, you're obsessing about what people are thinking of you. Mm -hmm. On the pride side, you're you're just sure that everyone's gonna you know worship you as a king, and on the insecurity, yeah. nobody's worshiping me as a king, and I'm so upset. But both both in both situations, your eyes are completely on yourself, mm -hmm. and it's it's so crazily self centered. And if you yeah. sometimes we just need to shift our perspective as we walk into a room, and think. The Lord has, it says in Ephesians 2, that he has good deeds that he has prepared for us beforehand yeah. to walk in. So if you walk into any room, whether it's a church service or your workplace or a party somewhere, a backyard barbecue, your kid's sports event, and you think God has good works for me prepared to do here, mm -hmm. and I need to walk in them, that gets your eyes off yourself and starts. it makes you start paying attention to who am I sitting by? How do they need to be encouraged? Maybe that person's lost and doesn't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's actual work for me to do. And just like stop paying so much attention to yourself. Because I promise the, the insecurity side of it is people are going to think this and they're thinking, no one's, Nobody's thinking no one's thinking about you. <laughs> I promise no one's talking about you or thinking about you or noticing or looking at you near as much as you think they are. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone's busy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, and in those moments, you know, like you said, those works that God has prepared for us, we need to realize that like God 
prepared those works for you and then he makes you adequate to do them yeah. like he didn't give you these works that he's then not going to empower you to be able mm -hmm. to do our adequacy comes from god mm -hmm. and we can be confident in that because he is enough yes and so if he's giving us that adequacy then we're mm -hmm. enough yep and keeping the humility to hear from people, to hear from the Lord, to be convicted of sin, to not think too highly of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, if you start, if you keep your eyes focused on the Lord, like you said, you're pretty clear on your own standing in the world and before God. Like, mm -hmm. oh, again, none of us are cool. Right. <laughs> so you just keep your eyes focused on Jesus and that will keep you in the proper place. And if we can try to fight for and walk in and guard humility, that will keep us from pride while also allowing us to walk in confidence. Mm -hmm. Because it's not, sometimes people even spiritually think if we lean more toward insecurity, that's safer spiritually because then we're not walking in pride. Yeah. And that's not necessarily true. Mm -mm. It's just a twisted, weird form of pride. It absolutely is. Yeah. Yes. So um, maybe we can give people some practical steps. How maybe they have areas in their life where they're super insecure. Mm -hmm. How should they start to try to grow in confidence in those areas? Well, I think the first thing is we have to identify when you start to feel, you can feel it, you know, you start to feel like, mm -hmm. where am I when that happens? What's yeah. happening? What has someone said? I, I figure out what is the common denominator there. I always feel like this when I go to this place or around these people. Um, some people just aren't nice. Maybe that's not a healthy <laughs> Maybe friendship. Don't be friends. Maybe don't be friends. <laughs> Maybe get new friends. Right. But also no one can make you feel a lack of confidence. Only mm -hmm. you can do that. And that's based on what you believe about yourself and who you are. So you need to identify those situations and then also identify what those situations make you feel like. Mm -hmm. So if I am with someone and I always feel uh, less than for some reason, then the question is, what what is what is that saying? Am I? A, what are you believing? Yeah, what am I believing? Yeah. yeah, I don't have as good of an education, so therefore I'm not worth as much as that person. I don't know the Bible as well, so therefore I must be stupid. Mm -hmm. I don't take my kids to 17 activities, therefore I'm a bad mom. Like what is the what mm -hmm. is it that you're believing? Because you really can't fight the lie with the truth until you even know what the lie right. is. Right. And then once you see what you're believing, then you have to look at the scripture and say, okay, like maybe even ask yourself, like, is there any value to that? Like is is there mm -hmm. any truth in it? Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can learn from this? And if not, if it's just a lie, mm -hmm. then you have to go to the scripture and see what does God say and battle it with the truth. Mm -hmm. Taking those thoughts captive, making them obedient to Christ and obedient to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And that's that's something that you practically have to walk in. Absolutely. That doesn't happen overnight. No. You're not just going to wake up and be like, okay, nailed it. Totally mm -hmm. confident today. That is... That speaks to your identity, your worth in Christ. It speaks to what you're called to be and being comfortable with that. And we have that's something that you have to work on over time with the Lord, but asking him to help you because he is faithful to grow us in those areas. Yeah, absolutely. And I think first and foremost, we have to decide that we don't want to feel like this anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. like some people live their whole lives just accepting that they're insecure, mm -hmm. just accepting that this is how I always feel and allowing that to be part of their identity. But we have to decide, like, God didn't call me to this. Mm -hmm. God gave me a spirit of power, yeah. you know? That's what the Bible says. And so how am I going to fight against the enemy, fight against myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? and really engage in this battle and become confident in the Lord so that he can use me? Yeah. And I'm not crippling myself with all these insecurities yep. and my lack of confidence. And it is, when you find someone that's comfortable in their own skin, it's a really beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a powerful thing, I yeah. think. And I think it places us in a position to have even a quiet influence in our sphere of, of that God has given us of all those people, whether it's a, a large amount of people or a small amount of people. Just to have that confidence is so peaceful. And I think it makes people easy to be around. Yeah. On the flip side, when you're with someone super insecure, it's difficult to be around those people. I always feel like I'm, I'm almost feeling their, breeding their okay? anxiety. <laughs> like, was that really a yes? Was that not a yes? Do you yeah. really want to do that? Do you really not? And, and it almost makes it more difficult to be in relationship with those people because mm -hmm. you're not sure what they're doing because they want to do, what they're doing because they're pleasing right. people. Um, I'm not sure if I'm making them feel insecure by something that I'm doing without knowing. Right. Um, and it is, you know, I'm not saying that I have like confidence nailed. Like I'm always confident. <laughs> I'm confident just <laughs> all these insecure people. It's really stressful. <laughs> not what I'm saying. But I, even in my own life, I recognize when I get around someone that feels like they're comfortable in their own skin, that mm -hmm. is a really 
that's a really beautiful thing to mm-hmm. behold and you want to be around someone like that. And so there are areas in my own life of insecurity where, where I notice, okay, I have to fight these things because I have to take them, like we said, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ because this is not what God has called me to be. Mm-hmm. He's called me to be obedient to him, to be confident in him, and that's a confidence that can't be shaken. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about just like a, a really beautiful thing to be around, when we were talking about this, I thought of the Proverbs 31 woman, mm-hmm. and it talks about how a woman who fears the Lord, she is to be praised, and how that outlasts all this beauty. And it also says that she smiles at the future. Mm-hmm. She's confident that her family is taken care of and all these things because she fears the Lord Mm -hmm. and that is really at the root of it. And that's Mm -hmm. just the picture of just a woman who's walking with the Lord, confident in who he is, who he made her to be. And it's just really living out that calling. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. So that's our goal. I mean, Proverbs 31, she's always the goal, but you know, it's okay. (laughs) We're all trying. (laughs) We'll get there someday on this side (laughs) of eternity or the next. (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) Well, thanks so much for joining us today. I hope that this was an encouragement to you, maybe a challenge to you, um, where God might be speaking to some areas of insecurity in your life that he wants to do some work on and he wants to help you grow in. If you um, have any questions or maybe have topics that you Mm -hmm. um, would like us to talk about, we have an email. Do what women at rockfenton.com. Women at rockfenton.com. That was just a little spur of the moment thing. <laughs> women at rockfenton.com. We would love to hear what maybe you'd like us to dig into and talk about. I hope that you're encouraged. We will see you next month. But until then, walk worthy. Mm-hmm.